Amanda. Amanda. Comrade Deputy President of the African National Congress, the officials of the African National Congress and the leadership of Alliance Partners, COSATU, the SACP, SANCO, and our various other formations who have joined us in this meeting, our leagues, our student formations, our traditional leaders' organizations, our religious organizations, sporting organizations and many others who are part of our mass democratic movement. I rise just to say a few words as we conclude this process. This was a review of our 2019 election manifesto. I'd like to appreciate the SGO for organizing that we should have this review process before we embark on the most important other process, which is phase two of this, of drafting our 2024 elections manifesto. This has been a necessary process so that when we go out to meet our people to tell them why they should vote for the African National Congress. We should be clear on what we have to say to them, but they should also be very clear on what this organization that leads them has done to take the National Democratic Revolution forward. So this, comrades, has been a most, most necessary process and as it has been said we are all going to get involved in the drafting of the manifesto it will be an inclusive process and it will be a process that will be born out of the views that were expressed today that will also be expressed by your various formations whether they be structures of the ANC and Alliance and various other formations as well. So we look forward to receiving the inputs that you're going to add on to what was articulated here. I'd like to appreciate the inputs from COSATU, from the SACP and SANCO, who took the time and the trouble to articulate their own views, but more importantly, their suggestions. And in their inputs, they also touched on issues which they believe we might not have paid sufficient attention to, and I will touch on a few of those. But I'd like to appreciate the review that was put forward by Comrade Phoebe and other comrades who in a very painstaking way went through what we set out in the 2019 election manifesto and looked at the issues that were covered in that manifesto. And if we thought we knew the manifesto, they dissected it thoroughly and identified the various areas, which I'll also touch on, some of those in a minute. I'm pleased that a number of our ministers found time to also participate in this review process, and deputy ministers, our premiers, our MECs, our mayors, as well as our members of parliament. We're really pleased your, with your participation because in many ways, you have made this whole process wholesome and, uh, of course, uh, not leaving out our chief whip, particularly because 
she was wielding the, the whip when she was talking here. <laughs> Just over four years have passed since we received a very clear and emphatic mandate from the people of our country to undertake fundamental transformation to grow our economy and to advance our people's lives. In around 300 days or so from now, the people of our country will once again go to the polls to elect their representatives. And we have no doubt in our mind that those people who have always supported the ANC and many others, 10 million and above, are going to come out in their large numbers to demonstrate their support for the only political organization that can improve their lives. So this for us has been a very appropriate time. And as the Secretary General said, once we have agglomerated all the views that we have put here, we will be able to report to our people publicly and inform them what we have done in implementing our 2029 manifesto, 2019 manifesto. We have undertaken this review not, as I said earlier, not as an accounting exercise. We, are not, we were not here merely to tabulate which of our commitments we implemented fully, which we have not implemented. We were here to make a proper review politically, socially, and economically as well. And we also wanted to understand why we made progress in some areas and why we didn't make progress in other areas. And we will be able to outline to our people where we have fallen short and why we fell short. We need to reflect on whether the actions that were contained in our 2019 manifesto were appropriate to the objective that we wanted to achieve. But we will also talk about what prevented us from implementing all of those objectives that we set out. So for us, the review of the manifesto, particularly the process that we went through today, has been a learning exercise. Learning exercise as well as an information exercise so that we are able to measure ourselves against what the reality is. And it is in this regard that we were particularly pleased to have a more objective review from comrades who have done the research more thoroughly, Comrade Phoebe and other comrades who have been doing the research, who were able to dissect the 2019 manifesto point by point. And for instance, on issues of the economy, they came out with 120 objectives that we needed to address. And they pointed out those that we have done well on and those that are in the process and those few that we have not executed. So this process has not been aimed at producing a report card. It is aimed at producing what I would call an ambitious and achievable program of action for the next five years. Next five years that will change the lives of our people for the better. And at the center of the 2019 election manifesto was a commitment to work together with our people, with various formations in our country, to transform the economy and to serve the people of our country. Now, this process has also followed on the process that we have started in government. At cabinet level, the deputy president and myself have been involved in a process where 
we've been meeting each one of our ministers and saying to them, we want to know and fully understand against our manifesto of 2019, against the medium term strategic plan or re review, and against the departmental plans that you have, what are the key priorities leading to the end of this term, the sixth term? And having sat down with all our ministers, they have tabulated what their key priorities are. And we've noted them all. And that is what they are going to be measured against. And we, the DP and I, have said we are going to meet them again in six months' time. And when we meet them, they must have their deputy ministers, their DGs, and some of their key officials to account what they will have done in executing those priorities. And we said we're not going to accept any excuses. We're not going to accept any explanation the priorities that you have set out must be priorities that must be addressed, met, and executed. Otherwise, otherwise, a lot of things will happen. We have said that very clearly to them. So this process of review, this process of refocusing the work that we do in government as well, has started. And what we've just been through is emboldening it and strengthening it. And we are very grateful that the African National Congress, which is the organization that leads our work in government, has taken this process seriously by doing this review process. And this review process is going to guide us not only to draft the new uh, the, 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 the election manifesto, but also to reinvigorate the work that we have to do in government. We're particularly grateful that we had the statistician general who was able to present what I would call a much more objective and independent type of take on some of the issues that we've been looking at as key priorities of our election manifesto. And of course, I should immediately hasten to say, having the statistician general here as a key official of our government also meant that, and we stressed, that should any other party want the statistician general to present what he presented to us here, he must go and present. He must do that. So what he presented to us is what he would present ordinarily to anyone, and it is also what he has presented publicly. And in his presentation, he focused on a number of key important areas, which I will come to in a little while. Our alliance partners, in their inputs, also spoke about some of the areas they believe have been shortcomings. But they also spoke positively about some of the things that really have uh, had an impact on a number of our people. For instance, Kosatu spoke very positively about the impact of the national minimum wage. We implemented the national minimum wage in 2019 or 2020 it is going to have an impact on 6 million workers who are earning way below where we set the minimum wage. And Kosatu said that has been one of the key defining progress implementation areas by this sixth administration, to have a national minimum wage for the first time in the history of our country in line with what the Freedom Charter said. And we agreed with them. So that, in many ways, is a real positive, because it was set out in our election manifesto. Yes, 
They also spoke about some of the areas where we have not implemented, particularly the SACP spoke about the issue that they raised, which we also said needs to be addressed. For instance, the issue of prescribed assets. They said no work has taken place on prescribed assets. They also spoke about the establishment of a sovereign wealth fund, that no work has taken place. And we will concede that, that work that is being done, possibly still under the radar, but work is being done, but they, as our alliance partner, would like to see that work emerging below the surface so that we can see what headway can be made. Also spoke about the issue of procurement, that we now need to ensure that the procurement process uh, is also streamlined and it should address the challenges that we face. The review process also spoke about the social compacts, that we want to see the social compact pro process coming alive. There's a, there was acknowledgement that we've had social compacts crafted, and we now need, as our manifesto said, that we now need to be working together with various other sectors so that we are able to take South Africa forward working together. And I do believe that we should take this objective forward in our new manifesto, because yes, we are making progress. Progress is being made in crafting sectoral compacts where we are working with our social partners in a variety of areas of work. The issue of land was raised, and Sanko was in the forefront of raising the issue of land, that we need to see more progress on the land issue. But they also raised another important area, which is about red tape. They would like red tape to be removed so that we are able to move quicker uh, uh, on a number of issues. We all agreed that much more needs to be done to complete the execution of our 2019 manifesto. And I'd like to believe that the verdict, the verdict that was emerging here is that much has been done, a lot still needs to be done, and we will rise from here knowing that a great deal of progress is being made in other words, the glass is not empty. The glass is half full and moving towards being full. That's precisely where we are. And this, in many ways, was also confirmed by some of the points that the Statistician General put forward. Statistician General is very colorful, uh, very, very demonstrative, in the way that he presents things, and I'm sure that when he presents to other people and other parties, he will remain as colorful as he was. But he touched on one important issue, which in many ways we don't pay close attention to. One of the, the three challenges that face us is unemployment, poverty, and inequality. And the statistician general in uh, measuring and uh, measuring the figures that have to do with how our people live, did say that the headcount poverty, according to the multidimensional poverty by geographic uh, various levels, has really gone down. And it has decreased from 17.9% to 7% and is also continuing to move further down. That is quite a significant achievement for a country like ours, which was bequeathed poverty through colonialism and apartheid repression and exploitation, that we have been able to succeed in moving poverty downwards. And quite often, we 
live in a situation where we do not pay attention to this. Poverty is one of our key objectives in terms of reducing it. The statistician general said it has been coming down from the 17% to 7%. That is phenomenal achievement. And the statistician general also touched on a number of issues. Something that we have done in quite a big measure where he said that the grants that the government has been making available to our people has also reduced vulnerability to hunger at an individual and household level, and that has declined and has been declining, yes, until 2019. But he says since 2020, vulnerability to hunger has increased slightly. But what all this means is that it has been coming down. And then it touches on important issues also that affect the lives of our people, about access to health care facilities, and that seven out of ten households, their first call when they are sick is to go to a public health care facility. That is an important achievement as well. And he also reports and we often don't hear this, that for instance, access to electricity, the connectivity, much as, yes, we all did bemoan the fact that uh, load shedding has been having a negative impact on the lives of our people, including on the economy. But in looking at the penetration of electricity, that there has been increasing penetration of connectivity, and it has lowered quite a bit in two provinces, but in the main, we have more than 90% of our people having access to electricity connectivity. And I can say that if you go through our continent and a number of developing economy countries, you do not find the connectivity to electricity in the way that we have it here. A number of countries on our continent hover around 50, 60 percent. This democratic ANC-led government has ensured that access to electricity to our people has reached more than 90 percent of our people. That is a significant achievement. Yes, when it comes to another important area that touches the life of our people is when it comes to access to improved water sources. 89.1% of South African households have access to improved water resources. Around 14% of those households still relied on communal or neighbor's tap as the main source of drinking water, meaning that We've hit the 90% mark in giving access to water to our people. You do not find that in many countries around the world. We have done that. Now, as we continue to work as a nation to create jobs, to end poverty, and to build a better life for all, what is clear for us as we draft our new and uh, 2024 manifesto is that many of the things that we set out in 2019 and many of those that we will set out in 2024 will only be achieved if we work together. I'm really pleased that this gathering here is composed, is composed of various individuals who are leaders of our people is composed of various formations that lead our people in many, many ways. And this, in the end, is where the leadership of the country really resides. If you want to find the leadership of the country, come to this place where we are today. And this is where real performance, real advancement is going to be driven. I am pleased that 
we've all found the space, the time in our program from our traditional leaders to our religious leaders to our sports organizations and of course our alliance partners and yes to even have our various government officials to be here as they work for this ANC-led government. So it is only by working together that we can strengthen our democracy and we can grow the economy of our country. This is a sentiment that was common amongst all of us as we were going through this review. And our discussions were really, truly enriched by the various inputs that we received here. And so I leave this meeting really my, with my spirit lifted, and I think all of us do. And with this, I do believe that we've got a really good platform for the African National Congress to go to the 2024 elections with the victory wrapped around our hands without any doubt. So you have laid the foundation for that victory, and I'd like to thank you for being here and those who have traveled, traveled from far and afield. Thank you very much for being here because the ANC leads and the ANC continues to live. Amanda! Thank you very much.